Hello, and welcome to On Point. I'm Nick Popham. In college, many students just can't seem to get enough sleep. At Cal State Northridge, this is ever more prevalent as people all over campus try to find anywhere to get some shut-eye. But just how vital is sleep? According to a recent study led by researchers at UC San Francisco, the more time a person stays awake, the more likely he or she is to catch a cold. They also found that someone's health has a strong connection to whether or not he or she is getting enough sleep. The widely accepted amount of sleep needed to keep your immune system strong is at least six to seven hours, which means that those who catch fewer Z's quadruple their chances they'll start to sneeze. On campus, a popular remedy used to deal with exhaustion is going to the closest coffee shop, but sometimes those lattes just don't do the trick. At CSUN, some awake students talk about how important their sleep is to them. I feel like if I don't sleep enough, I can't function during the day, so that's just kind of where my main source of energy comes from. Just being generally tired throughout the day, not really wanting to do as much, physically especially, uh, being affected by the weather more, just in general being a little bit more tired. If I don't sleep enough or if I don't eat enough, then I'm going to be pretty groggy throughout the day. I can't um, think of my feet. I need to be able to do that. Because all the work. You have a lot of homework. so much homework so many things to do. I can't, I'm never done. I can never sleep. Because the more I sleep, the more energy I have throughout the day to get stuff done. It's important, but it's, I, I think it's a waste of time at times. <laughs> you know, uh, I'd rather be doing something, uh, whether that be working or, or just, I don't know, I like being productive. And so to me, sleep isn't as productive. I enjoy it, but it's not the most productive thing to me. Despite differing opinions on its importance, medical experts say sleep is a natural way a person's body fights off sickness. But for now, rise and shine because On Point's Anna Copian has more. Thank you, Nick. Today we have two guests joining me. Um, to my left is Angie Simon, who's a representative with REM Sleep Labs, and also Dr. Saimir Thano, who's a staff psychologist at University Counseling Services. Thank you guys for joining us. Of course, today. thank so you. So we have a lot to cover, so I'm just going to dive straight into the first question. So why do you think we need sleep? Dr. Thano, you can go ahead and answer that. Um, it's very important to, to get sleep. It's, uh, sleep plays a repetitive uh, role, uh, repetitive role for um, both psychologically as well as uh, physiologically. It helps uh, in, um, uh, it creates for the brain, it creates hormones that help uh, pathways, create new pathways for our, uh, concentration and memory. And uh, physiologically, it's sort of like a, it plays the role of a um, battery, sort of re energizing our body. And also, uh, at, at times, uh, it's been found to uh, sleep also produces certain hormones that help in fighting common uh, illness and uh, helps us, you know, helps also other organs to rest. Nice. And Andy? Yeah, um, just touching on what um, he said, it's just your overall well-being. Um, when you get the proper sleep, um, you just feel better overall. You have more energy, you have better memory um, retention for students especially. Um, you're more inclined to want to exercise. Um, so it's just your overall well-being. When you get good quality sleep, you overall feel better, and I think the quality of your life is better. Right. And what happens to the mind when you're uh, when you're like a, a, in an overnight sleep, Doctor? Sure, Sano? sure, sure. As I mentioned, uh, the new pathways get created that help our brain uh, create memories, uh, foster memories, and process a lot of the information that has been uh, occurring throughout the, throughout the day. Uh, and also, it allows it for to rest. Uh, you know, there's a lot of going on. As students, uh, experience a lot of uh, um, uh, dif different uh, situations, and uh, th during the the day, the brain does get overwhelmed with uh, with a lot of this new information. So during the night, it allows it for all the information to uh, uh, process and increase our, our ability to um, for the memory to increase and for our attention to uh, increase as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, what about for the body? Like, what happens to the body? Or you both can answer it. Mm -hmm. um, if you both want to have an input, like during sleep, I know like there's not like a certain thing that happens to the body because it's like in rest mode. Mm -hmm. But um, what makes it possible for you to feel rested the next day and feel recharged? Mm -hmm. You know. 
Um, well, the goal is every night to get into REM sleep. Um, there's different sleep cycles, but if your body does reach REM sleep, then you're getting that good quality sleep that you want. However, if you do have a sleep disorder, the sleep disorder will stop you from getting to that REM sleep, which is the goal each night to hit that. Um, and there are different symptoms that will stop you from getting there, such as um, snoring, um, restless limb movement, um, restless leg movement, um, there's multiple factors that can go into that. Okay, thank you. Okay. As I mentioned earlier, I think a lot of the organs that, that work very hard during the day take a, a moment to sort of rest. Uh, our heart rate drops, our blood pressure drops, so everything sort of re relaxes mm -hmm. and uh, gives an opportunity to re-energize for the next day. Okay, and then how many hours of sleep is usually recommended mm -hmm. nightly? I mean, there's like, people say six hours, others say eight, and then there are people that um, function less mm -hmm. than eight hours of sleep a night. I mean, mm -hmm. different bodies are different, but how much, how many hours of sleep would you guys say is the recommended amount nightly? Mm -hmm. So I, I would say six to eight hours, but again, um, if you're sleeping eight hours a night, but you're not getting good quality sleep, in reality, it could be equivalent to you only sleeping maybe four hours. So it's really quantity sleep over, or uh, quality sleep over quantity sleep. What exactly is quality sleep? So um, quality sleep is, like I said, getting in that deep REM sleep. Okay. And yeah, I would like to echo that, that same uh, information. Uh, there is, depending on the person, some individuals may need more, some less, but on average, um, research recommends seven to eight hours, um, nine the most, but uh, different individuals may need a uh, um, different amount of, uh, of sleep. And there are people that um, I personally know or have, or have heard, when they get more hours of sleep throughout their night or even their daytime, mm -hmm. um, they tend to be more tired physically and mentally than like feel well rested. Why is that? Why would you feel more tired if you were to get like nine hours of sleep a night or mm -hmm. eight hours or more um, right, right. like consecutively? That, that's, a, that's a good point. I think a lot of students tend to believe that if I were to sleep more, that means that I'm going to get more rest, but it doesn't mean because there's such a thing as oversleeping and overresting. Um, your body sort of needs that a, a particular amount of, of rest, and you, when you uh, rest more, it, it sort of uh, shifts from, from feeling rested to becoming more tired. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, it's important to, to identify the, the number of hours that one individual uh, needs versus sort of guessing that if I were to sleep 10 hours, then I would be feeling uh, more rested. And if you were to feel tired after, let's say, nine hours of sleep, mm -hmm. what can you do to feel normally rested after? Like, get less hours of sleep the next day? Mm -hmm. Or, like, what can you do to, like, right. generate the, um, the structure of your sleep right. again back to normal? Uh, that's that's a, that's a good question. Again, students believe that if there were that things can cancel out. So if mm -hmm. I sleep nine hours, I can sleep eight hours or six hours. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't work like that. The important part is that uh, each student needs, it's important for them to uh, uh, find out their their um, amount of sleep that works for them, and it needs to become uh, uh, an every night uh, a schedule versus uh, uh, one hour, one night more and one night less. So they one thing that I would recommend would be for them to maybe have a. Uh, a calendar or something they can write down uh, every time how much they sleep and see where, where they feel the most rested versus uh, uh, trying to figure out um, which night is more or less. Perfect. And do you have anything to add? Um, no, I was just going to add on that a sleep pattern is always good to get on the schedule and get in a good sleep pattern that works best for you. Um, and each individual is different, you know, so everyone has different schedules, different work schedules, um, but sleep patterns are always a good idea. Perfect. And then um, lots of students have trouble sleeping, especially mm -hmm. in college, and I'm sure you guys are aware of that. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Thano, this question is for you. Why would you say that students have um, a hard time sleeping usually? Yeah, the, um, there is there is uh, various reasons why, and each individual again, it's it's different. Uh, it can be uh, uh, as much as uh, maybe the food they're eating. It can be uh, also the amount of work that they have, the stress that they have. Stress definitely impacts the, the ability, one's ability to to rest and, and uh, get enough sleep. Uh, maybe a substance use. Uh, it's, a, it's a big factor uh, when it comes to the amount of sleep someone gets. Uh, many students try to cramp everything up uh, um, in terms of studying and, and want to study everything in one day or in one night, um, staying out, um, watching TV, being online. Those are different um, uh, factors that impact one's ability to, to have a full night of uh, rest or be able to sleep.
Right. Mm -hmm. And if uh, students are cramming for finals or a test the night before and they're staying like halfway up through the night, do you think that they will um, register the information mm -hmm. well in order to store it in their minds for the next day's test for because they didn't get the amount of sleep in? Like, do you think that um, studying that long before a mm -hmm. night's test is helpful for them? Or would it be better if they were to like um, separate out their study time until the day and get that full night's rest mm -hmm. before the test? Um, studies have, have actually shown that uh, those individuals or students that uh, do uh, study over do overnighters, their GPA tends to be lower, in general, and that's because, um, as I mentioned earlier, a brain does need the, its ability to rest, and, uh, and when they rest, there's new pathways for memory and attention. So when you cram and do everything the one night, y your brain is not able to create those new memories. So I do, as you uh, mentioned, it's best that students do study, have periods where they um, chunks of during the day with their study versus doing the the night before. Okay. Do you have anything to add to that? Um, no, I think he covered it. Okay. <laughs> and then. Um, Angie, do you think that sleeping pills um, off the counter are, or just sleeping pills in general that people take like um, night Advil, Advil PM, just off the counter stuff, um, do you think that it's effective to people who are unable to fall asleep at night? Um, you know, sometimes some, if it's properly diagnosed um, and they do need that pill to aid them, it can help, but usually there's an underlying sleep disorder um, and the sleeping aid pill is usually masking that underlying sleep disorder. So the only way to properly um, know if you do have a sleep disorder is to come in lab and get tested for a sleep disorder and then to get the proper treatment from there whether it is a sleep aid or um, a different type of treatment such as like a CPAP machine. And for the people that don't know if there are sleep labs existing and like that kind of, um, that kind of, um, like that kind outlet. of, yeah, outlet to like go to and they keep on consuming those sleeping pills, um, will that be like really bad for their bodies later on? Like um, will it take a complete toll on their body or shut mm -hmm. it down or, I mean, um, over time, I do think um, it will affect them. Um, like I said, I think it's always the best route to weigh out all your options mm -hmm. and you know figure out exactly what is um, hindering your sleep and why you need um, assistance to sleep better. And I think the best proper way to um, figure that out is by getting um, properly diagnosed by getting the test done in a sleep lab. Okay. And then um, do you guys think that natural remedies is good for a good night's sleep, like uh, warm milk or melatonin? Like, do you think sure. that helps sure. people um, to sleep better overnight? Mm -hmm. One thing that I would recommend uh, for students, because I, I do uh, work with many students that come in, um, uh, believing that you know those remedies, uh, over-the-counter pills, sleeping pills may be helpful for them, I would recommend that they uh, do meet with a physician, their uh, primary physician, and, and speak to them. Those remedies and, and um, over-the-counter sleeping pills may have side effects. Each individual reacts differently to them. So one friend, for example, may you know react well and you know may work for them, may not work for the same for the same for the the, the other students. So I would uh, highly recommend that they um, check in with their um, primary physicians if there is any allergies. There could potentially be allergies that may impact them in a negative way. And then do you have any comment about the uh, natural sleeping remedies? Um. Not necessarily. I think maybe sometimes they can calm you, like tea is very mm -hmm. calming. But um, other than that, like I said, if you really are having um, symptoms that is aiding your sleep, the best way is to see your physician, um, you know, talk about it, say what your problems are so that they can go from there and probably assess you and then, um, you know, go from there. And then um, do you guys think that electronics, like being on your phones or watching television at night, can affect um, like a student's sleep or a person's sleep throughout the night? Um, Angie, we can start with you. Yeah, it definitely can. So if you're in bed and you're looking at your iPad, um, your iPhone, your laptop, there's a blue light behind it. And so if you're studying off of your iPad, and that blue light is coming, it stimulates the brain. And so actually when you do then try to fall asleep, that blue light will affect your sleep later on. So they do recommend actually studying off of paper 
um, and not not being on your phone right before sleep because then, like I said, it will affect your quality of sleep after the fact due to that blue light that's behind it. What if you don't study with electronics right before you sleep, but you study throughout your day, like from morning to evening, and then at night you just read from a book? Yeah, that's totally fine. I okay. think it's more so when you're laying in bed and it's, you know, you're winding down and you're just doing your last um, reviews right before and then you're going to sleep. I, that's when it'll affect you. But during the day, yeah, it's totally that's fine. fine. Yeah, um, I, I think what happens often is when you have electronics and, you know, computers and phones, you're sort of sending a message to your brain that it's not time to sleep yet. Right, so it's almost uh, um, uh, telling the brain that you need to stay awake. So when you put those away, what happens is that you're trying to sleep, but you can't because your brain has been, you know, uh, programmed to stay longer. And then, you know, students uh, end up having a difficult time falling asleep because of that. So uh, I would stay away from uh, having electronics uh, right before going to sleep. And then um, I know some students or even people in general that um, keep television screens on or like mm -hmm. a light on a bathroom light or a night light do you think like having some kind of light when you're sleeping or before you sleep just stay on throughout the night affects your sleep as well yeah uh, it depends on the individual some individuals there may there may be a reason why the the light uh, can be may not be related to their sleep pattern maybe uh, under other underlying issues but if for certain, an individual a light on uh, works and it doesn't interrupt their sleep helps them fall asleep actually then then it's okay uh, if it becomes an issue and the light uh, sort of uh, interrupts their sleep pattern and able to fall asleep or remain asleep then something that needs to be addressed and maybe looked into Mm -hmm. And then what about like sleeping in warm or cold rooms? Does that affect someone's sleep or the way you can get like... It's recommended to sleep in a cold room. Mm -hmm. You and will get better quality sleep in a cold room. Why is that? To get like better sleep like cold instead of warm? Um, it just, you know, they say it just keeps the body more awake or not awake, I'm sorry, just more um, going how it should. And then if you sleep in a warm room, warm room, does that maybe slow down um, the fact that you can fall asleep faster? It definitely gets in the way of, of you getting comfortable and allowing the body to sort of pro process and progress into, into sleep. Uh, research shows that uh, a temperature 60 to 68 is sort of like the temperature that it's uh, a perfect temperature to have in the room. And it, it may feel cold a little time and it's okay to have blankets on and sleep with blankets as long as the room temperature uh, is between 60 and 68. And then a lot of college students, um, which I'm sure you guys know, intake a lot of caffeine mm -hmm. and a lot of energy drinks, mm -hmm. thinking that it's going to help them mm -hmm. um, get like mentally wired and stay awake. Do you guys think that that is even like, especially taking a lot of coffee throughout your day, I feel like it can affect your sleep at night or mm -hmm. even energy drinks even throughout the day instead of even if you get your eight hours or nine hours of sleep nightly and or less and you take energy drinks for coffee, it can end up slowing you down instead of actually giving you the energy to stay mm -hmm. awake throughout the day. What would you say about that, Angie? Um, I think it's more individualized. I know when a patient is coming to our lab, we recommend them not to have coffee prior to the study, um, not to have an energy drink, not to consume alcohol. Um, so that you're uh, most in your natural habitat and um, so that you get the most accurate results. So that is something that we do uh, recommend to our patients to not consume prior to the study as it can affect your sleep and can affect results. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I think it has an impact, and I think a lot of students do feel that. Uh, many times, what they're trying to students, I find students trying to uh, sort of catch up on their studies by by drinking, sleeping less, and having to sort of increase the energy. But if you were to do that, engage in that sort of uh, consumption, caffeine consumption, uh, long term, it impacts not only so your ability to sleep, but also uh, your overall well-being uh, will be uh, impacted. And then um, study shows that people getting in less than five hours of sleep are most likely to catch a cold than those that mm -hmm. are to get their required eight hours. Um, why would you guys say that sleep is, why, why would sleep fight the urge to catch a cold or an illness, um, getting like your recommended hours of sleep? Right. As I mentioned earlier, I think uh, uh, one of the key components of sleep and one that, that helps in, in terms of physiologically is that it produces hormones that uh, fights common, common illnesses, common uh, uh, sicknesses. So if, the, if uh, the body doesn't get that, doesn't get the amount of sleep that it needs, it won't be able to fight because it's, it's um, 
uh, you wake up uh, not feeling as rested, you, you don't have as much energy as you'd like to, um, you're not able to uh, manage the certain things that you need to throughout the day, and it's, it opens it up more to, uh, to common illnesses. Do you have anything to add to that? Or? Um, no, I think he covered it. Okay. And then, um, do you, Dr. Dano, this is for you. Is there a higher chance that stress levels can increase due to lack of sleep for those who are already involved in stressful life situations? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, um, not getting enough sleep increases the uh, one's stress level. Uh, the hormones that gets produced as a result of stress um, get increased uh, because you're not the body's not able to sort of fight that stress and are able to uh, rest. So, uh, in addition to having a stressful life, not getting enough sleep uh, increases the amount of stress and the ability to concentrate and uh, be motivated and have the attention and have the energy that you need uh, to make it through your daily life. Um, and then also, Angie, do you think naps actually um, do justice? Like, do they help throughout the day? I know there are, like, certain people, um, for certain people, taking, like, an hour nap throughout the day helps them. But then for others, uh, it prevents them from falling asleep at night. Like, do you guys think that it's helpful to even take it? Um, taking a nap definitely will... Um sometimes affect you falling back asleep at nighttime. Um, usually if you are taking a nap or feel the need to take a nap, it's because you have daytime sleepiness or um, your fatigue, and that's usually because of at nighttime you're not getting that quality um, sleep. And so, um, again, when you are getting treated for um, and coming and getting tested, they do also recommend not trying not to take a nap also. So it definitely does affect your sleep at night taking naps. Mm -hmm. What I want to add to that too, uh, in addition, is that research has shown that prior, if you were, if you were planning on taking a nap, keep it between 15, 20 minutes, but also take a nap uh, before um, the hour of three, before 3 p.m. Uh, if you start taking naps after 3 p.m., it will impact your ability to fall asleep and your ability to remain asleep as well. And I, as I'm saying, it's recommended if, if you can, but it needs to be 15, 20 minutes and prior to 3 o'clock. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And then, um, Dr. Dano, do you think it's beneficial if um, classes for students were to start at 10 a.m. instead of like 8 mm -hmm. or 9 a.m. in the morning? Right. I think there's a lot of research out there that, that uh, sort of is looking into this. I don't think it's, uh, at this point, it's not definite what, uh, what the best approach is, if uh, 8 o'clock or, or 10 o'clock would be the best. So I think we, we have to wait and see uh, uh, maybe another year or so, maybe find more information and research will be more extensive around the area. Okay. And then what about um, students that take, like, drugs, consume mm -hmm. drugs or alcohol throughout their day or their week, mm -hmm. do you think that can affect your sleeping pattern at night as well? Absolutely, absolutely. I think a lot of uh, students, uh, sometimes even uh, alcohol, not only, it may, it may help you fall asleep, but the, the quality of sleep that you get, uh, it's not going to be a uh, uh, high quality of sleep, and then you're going to wake up not feeling rested and, and lack of energy. Uh, in addition to any other substances that you may use, uh, long use of them, it'll definitely impact your ability to uh, have a full rest at night. Mm -hmm. And then what about getting, I know like um, having like a good diet or a good exercise mm -hmm. throughout your day is usually very important and beneficial to your lifestyle, um, but do you think that like getting in a good diet throughout the day or having a good diet and even exercising like half an hour a day can help you to um, get better rest at night? Angie? Um, yeah, I definitely think it can help. Um, like I said earlier, when you're getting good sleep, your overall well-being is better, and so it actually makes you want to exercise, it makes you want to eat healthier, uh, you feel better about yourself, um, you're not as sluggish, so um, yeah, I definitely think those factors of exercise and eating better, I think they all kind of play a role with each other, and it definitely can help your sleep. Yeah, overall, uh, just a, a good uh, routine and exercising, eating healthy, it does make a, a, a significant difference in your ability to um, have more energy, you know, sleep well. Perfect. And then um, also, Dr. Thano, this question is directed to you. Okay. Um, is it true that a person, that every person dreams at night, and if they do, um, 
how come they don't like half the time they don't remember that they dream or what dream they saw? Anyway? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a very interesting question. I think there's a lot of students that come in and, uh, and uh, speak with me about dreams and uh, what they are. Uh, there's different research out there that speaks about you know individuals. Some say, well, no, they don't dream, and some others say they, they do. Uh, and uh, sometimes dreams can be remembered when they're like, closer to when you're waking up versus dreams that are doing uh, certain periods of the night where uh, it's you're much deeper sleep and you're not able to remember. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, there's research out there that does show that it does uh, impact one's ability to have a good night, uh, depending on the dream, the type of dream, and how, how they're dreaming. And also there's research also showing why someone may be dreaming, depending on, on uh, some people say they even uh, kind of the type of food that you eat, uh, uh, what has happened throughout the day may impact whether or not you dream or the type of dreams that you have. Uh, and uh, which uh, directs uh, points to the the importance of, of uh, sleep because it does allow you to process a lot of information that you have been you know, experiencing throughout the, throughout the day. All right. And lastly, um, what tips would you guys give mm -hmm. to college students that um, to improve their sleeping patterns? Yeah. Angie. Um, I think just to not, when you're laying in bed, look be on your iPad right prior, um, not to be looking at your phone just because of that blue light and how it will stimulate your brain um, when you're trying then to fall asleep. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that if you are sleeping eight hours, but every day you still feel sluggish, you still feel fatigue, um, then to maybe go seek out your doctor, your primary care practitioner, and let them know of those feelings. And then um, from there, you know, see if maybe um, coming in lab for testing is what you need to see if maybe there is an underlying sleep disorder to go further. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I have, I have a list of, uh, of ways that students can improve, uh, improve their sleep. One of them, we're talking about the bed. I think uh, research has shown that and uh, does um, encourage students and everyone to use the bed only for sleep and sex and nothing else mm -hmm. uh, because the body uh, sort of gets used to it. Like if, you, if you're studying in bed, if you're just laying and watching uh, Netflix, that your body sort of gets used to This is what I do in bed, watch and read and do other things. So taking that away, it really makes a difference. Um, also, uh, it's important to go to sleep not um, uh, with an empty stomach or full stomach. Uh, uh, don't drink a lot of fluids, uh, uh, maybe prior to going to sleep. Uh, making sure that you don't have any electronics, as we mentioned, uh, about, and then don't consume any caffeine. Uh, as we said earlier about naps, taking naps before 3 o'clock. Um, so there's, there's quite a few things. And substance use as well, as we mentioned earlier, uh, minimizing substance use. It's very right. important. All right, that's all. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having us. Okay, so you wouldn't we'll give see. yourself or your loved one poison, would you? Then why would you take or give counterfeit medications that may contain the wrong or no active ingredient? Counterfeit medications are out there. They can be ineffective and harmful to your health. Maybe. Be a smart okay. consumer and know your pharmacy, especially if you're purchasing medication online. Come on, let's go. Just a minute, I gotta finish this. Wait, you're gonna post those pictures of Mary? Yep. She thinks she's so hot. But her mom and dad will see them. Her grandmother, her little sister, everyone she knows, it's gonna kill her. Who cares? Just a couple of pictures. It's no big deal. No big deal? Don't. This has gotta stop. So, same time next week? Well, of course. Thank you for watching On Point. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter at CSUN On Point. Sunday mornings, look for us on LA's Channel 36 at 1130 and tune in to KCSN on 88.5 FM at 530 in the morning to listen each week. For all of us here at On Point, I'm Nick Popham, and we'll see you next week.